Um, the, the black gown situation is precarious to say the least. So um, they've undergone historic population declines and range contraction for, for a variety of reasons. Um, and, and they're really on the edge now. We're talking about last gasp efforts to, to save the population. Um, and, and the population here is key. So it provides a link between the, the dwindling population in North England and the, the luckily the thriving population in northern Scotland and if we lose that connectivity um, the England population becomes isolated and that can cause all sorts of problems as well for gene mixing and stuff so it's not good and our population is so important that's why we're so vested in trying to help turn things around. Black grouse are a lecking species and that means that they basically the males get together and they compete for the attention of females and they win the breeding rights uh, the, the top bird is the, is the one that gets to mate with the females. And as legs die out, because when you're getting to one or two males, then obviously the chances are those two birds are not going to survive a winter. Um, it means that less and less legs are dispersed across the hillsides, and uh, it means it's further and further for the hens to disperse. So black grouse are a key species for forestry in Scotland, not just locally, but also nationally as well. So we're very lucky that Galloway Forest Park has a large number or a large-ish number of black grouse left across Scotland. And so it's really important that we help with the habitat, but that we also monitor the numbers that are present. So we typically every year do a trial management plot area where we do ongoing census surveys to find out how many birds we have. But we've also been working with the likes of the RSPB and the Galloway Glens to provide contribution in kind for things like habitat restoration, which includes the removal of things like non-native conifer. So as part of this project, uh, RSPB are working very closely with Forestry and Land Scotland and we're generating five management plans to create brood rearing habitat across the Galloway Glens. So those five management plans uh, hopefully will ensure the future of black grouse in the area. They cover a period of 20 years, the next 20 years, and hopefully that means that the populations within those lakes will grow and birds will be able to disperse from there and feed into the surrounding lakes as well. So perfect brood rearing habitat is a bit of this scrub really, so a little bit of willow and other mixed broadleaf species with a little bit of the heather coming through, blaberry as well because the chicks when they're very small they'll be feeding on insects so the insect life will come in where it's nice and wet and boggy and damp as well and obviously that's what willow tends to like. The springs are getting wetter so in June we're getting a lot of rainfall and that impacts on chick survival. So what we're trying to do is create areas of ideal habitat which has a mixed uh, sward structure, that's a mixed height of vegetation. That means that if chicks need to dry out, there are more open spaces for them to do that. But there are also taller parts of the vegetation where they can go and hide from predators. So we're working across uh, a number of sites um, in, in two ways, so we, we monitor, we do a lot of LEC surveys, so we're really lucky that we've got a fantastic volunteer team that cover um, uh, about 25 LEC sites uh, across the Galloway Glens. And then we're always engaging with FLS, so a big part of my work now is um, looking at the forest plans that they come up with, their land management plans and providing advice on black grouse, uh, and that happens across the, across the Galloway Glens. So we're really, we're really kind of proactive in, in that, and, and it, can be up, it can be dozens of sites a year that we're, we're, we're looking at and we're interested in. So we're here today planting in this particular area because this area is already fenced, it's an enclosed area and it's a really good spot for black grouse and whilst we've already got the majority of the habitat here it needs a little bit of topping up so we're planting some of the mixed broadleaf species that the grouse like which includes the like of the birch that we're putting in today and we're putting it quite close to this fence line in the hope that the natural region will start to disperse out onto the open hill to provide more optimum habitat. Volunteers are key to the project uh, and this year uh, we've uh, had a super human effort from our volunteers. We've uh, doubled the number of hours that they've dedicated to surveying lakes and that means getting up at a very early hour in the morning. So you're talking about um, later on uh, towards the end of May you have birds that are leking at 3 o'clock in the morning. They're not even waiting for sunrise, they're actually doing it in the full moon. Uh, and that data is absolutely essential to see exactly how uh, populations are changing year by year. And we now have great data for the last 20 to 30 years in the area. Uh, and it's important to know, well, if the lakes are still there, then these areas that we need to work on the habitat. Uh, at the moment, we've got a special edition badge. So if anyone wants to help out, uh, raise a little bit of funds um, for RSPB for this project uh, specifically, then um, you can go online. You, if you search for black grouse pin badge RSPB, 
Um, there's a special edition badge on sale on, on eBay, or you can look out for them in the boxes spread around the Galloway lines. So black grouse are another of our priority species and, and I think one of the, the amazing things about black grouse is not just the fact that they've been declining and so we're really working hard to try and retain those populations and indeed to increase them, but actually a lot of the habitat work that goes into black grouse is also equally beneficial to other upland bird species that are also in decline such as curlew, golden plover and things. So that work is really beneficial on a much wider scale but the black grouse really if you've ever seen, been to a black grouse lake at four o'clock in the morning, you can't beat it. It's really something quite amazing. Well, a brilliant example of partnership working. Just ahead of us, we've got uh, Forest Land Scotland, busy planting trees. We've got a few guys from the RSPB down below us. And this is recognition of how precarious the black grouse population is now. There's a real risk that they will become extinct in this region in the next five or 10 years if, if action doesn't happen. So these guys have come together and they're forming plans and this is where the, the sort of money that uh, Galloway Glens has and support we, we can bring to these projects to make sure it happens. Uh, it's a really outstanding project and wouldn't it be so sad if in 20-30 years time we're talking about how the black grouse used to be here. <laughs>